All right, I'll set you up there and, oh, it's not looking good. Oh yeah, it's, that's not good at all. What's going on guys, it's Danny from Slow Restoration and hand is healed up at least enough to uh, keep working on this Impala. And uh, we've been working on it actually. So we did get this side spring installed, shock installed, both ball joints connected. So we are kind of put the back to, back together on this side. We still have to hook up our um, tie rod end assembly here and tighten everything up. Um, we're finishing up the spring install on this side. It's very, uh, you definitely got to watch how you do it and uh, not for the faint of heart to get those springs back in. But as you can see, this side we got back in safely. Um, we're just kind of going along here. We still have a couple things to button up, but as soon as we get that spring back installed, ball joints hooked up, shock in, then we can just start tightening everything up, adjusting stuff if need be. So we have to do the sway bar uh, bushing here and then the end links, but we're gonna leave that out until we get all of this tight because it's a lot easier to work in here without that end link connecting and being in your way. So let, let's keep going on here. Um, I was gonna show actually what the damage was on my thumb, but it was kind of gross. So we're just gonna skip that detail and um, just be careful as you're working. Uh, things do happen, they will happen. You will get busted knuckles, uh, smashed thumbs, whatever. Um, but part of working on cars. Let's keep going here. We did get our other side all buttoned up here. Everything's back together, tightened up and just go, go back over everything. Make sure everything is tight. Uh, we got all, all of our cotter pins in, upper, lower ball joint, actually it's down here, uh, outer tie rod, inner tie rod, both sides, um, idler arm, cotter pin, and same with this side, everything's tight, everything's the way it should be. We do still have to go uh, back and grease everything. It does get chipped with grease in it, but you really should grease all these joints as you go. Um, we are missing a couple grease fittings. We'll catch that as we go, install them. But uh, now let's go ahead and tackle the sway bar end links and then we'll do the bushings themselves. Um, one thing this kit does not replace is um, there is a cylinder here for power assist and it does not address that. Uh, that's kind of a separate deal, but it doesn't seem like it's too bad. Um, if the customer wants to do that, we can always uh, you pretty much have to send these out and have them rebuilt the cylinder. It doesn't look like it's pouring or leaking or anything. So um, let's keep going here. We'll get them sway bar end links and get the front end greased. And uh, we can do a quick once over, get the wheels back on and get this thing dropped down. With most of that tied up down at the bottom, we have it the car lower back down. We do still need to tighten these uh, crossbars on the upper A arms up. And before we do that, we're actually going to put the shims that we took out back in. That should get us really close. Close enough, close enough to get us to uh, get a front end alignment done. Um, usually, like I said, putting the shims that came out is uh, pretty, pretty close. Uh, the aftermarket parts are fairly close to the original stuff. So anyway, we're just going to go ahead and slip these shims back in. We'll tighten the two nuts up on either side. And uh, while we're here, we'll go ahead and we have the, the upper shock nut uh, on the st shock stud started. We will go ahead and cinch them down also. All right. We are done. Full suspension rebuild. Uh, shock springs, bushings, front, back, everything. Um, it does sit a little bit different. Sits a little bit higher. Um, it will settle down obviously and uh, it's ready to be it still needs a front end alignment But uh, the customer is going to take care of that We're ready to back this thing out and move on to the next project With this beautiful 1963 Impala convertible done and out of the garage We have this Duramax pull in real quick. We're gonna pull this in. We got a couple maintenance things to do to it tire rotation fuel filter and just a quick once over so let's go ahead and get this inside and obviously everyone has a different way of doing this the way i like to do a tire rotation is go ahead and pop center caps off all the lug nuts off the wheels pull the back two off roll them towards the front 
inspect the back and then when I pull the front off I just walk them back here and slip them right on or when I pull the front off I walk them back here and slip them right on the back and they're ready to be reinstalled and then we can check the front out this is the same truck I did the I think it's a five inch MBRP exhaust and the downpipe also and it all that looks good it's holding up uh, I don't see any leaks or anything like that. Good to go. Back tires back on, tightened up, front all checked out. Uh, we're on to the, the fuel filter replacement. And I've showed this before, by far the easiest way uh, to do this is pop that inner fender out. Um, you can get right in here, right here is the fuel filter. It's extremely easy if you do it this way. Um, not that it's impossible to do from up top, but it makes a little bit more of a mess. We'll put a jug in here and catch all that. And um, we'll back this off, back the whole thing off, and let's just get it draining and I'll show you. It does have a water separator, separator at the bottom. You can drain and then remove that piece. You, you are gonna reuse that, of course. Uh, you know how to do this if you have one of these trucks. So we pop that loose and we'll put our drain band back under, finish taking the filter off, and we'll, we, we will be ready to re-o-ring and reinstall the new one. We have the new filter spun on. Don't forget to make sure that top o-ring is uh, on there correctly. And we have the water separator. And again, don't forget to change this o-ring here. And we'll thread that back up on there and we'll be ready to go back together, go up top and prime that filter. So we have the fender liner back on, wheel back on, back under the hood to get some light. Right there's the fuel filter, so it's definitely accessible from up top. Light battery's dead, but um, either way, it is easier when you're underneath to just pull that liner. But um, now we have to prime the filter. There is a prime button right here. And you just simply depress that and it pumps fuel into that filter so when you fire it up it's not running dry and when this starts get, to get a little bit of pressure on it um, you're pumped up and you can actually I don't know if you can hear that but probably not but as I pump that I can actually hear the fuel returning to the tank so we're definitely pumped up. We'll go ahead and start it up. Fire right up. And we're good to go. Double check for leaks, but we're ready to back this one out also. And we have another project coming in. It's going to be a little bit uh, kind of interesting. Be a nice, should be a fairly fast job. Uh, not not like this not normal maintenance stuff so anxious to get that thing in we got the duramax out we got the garage swept up a little bit here and our next project is right outside the door if i quit talking you can probably hear it let's go ahead and open this up and get a sneak peek at what we're gonna do here there she is 2006 c6 corvette this does have the LS2 in it still, but it is six speed, beautiful car. It's got a cat back exhaust on it now. It's getting Texas speed headers, Texas speed cam, and it's gonna sound way different. We get a nice sound clip here before we do any work. It does sound good. Um, it's a nice clean car, low miles. I think it's around 20,000 miles, but set you down we'll go ahead and get a couple revs definitely has a really good sound already um, it does have 19,042 miles Go ahead and open the hood here and it is a completely stock LS2 
except for a Veram intake system. So that's going to change here really, really soon. So stay tuned for this. Uh, that's what we're getting into right now. So Texas Speed Cam incoming. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good day.